So throughout the world, people take vacations and plan amazing hikes, but the one thing they never plan on is getting injured due to soft tissue injuries on the knee. In this video, I'm gonna go over one of the most common non-traumatic injuries. And for all you new hikers out there, this may just save your next hike. So as many of you know, I'm a student physical therapist and I am thankfully about to graduate next May. I can go deep into different knee diagnoses, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna keep this video very general and just talk about how to preserve the front of the knee, how to keep that safe during long distance hiking. Many experienced hikers are going to understand what I'm about to describe. It's that point in the hike on the front of either of your knees where you just kind of feel something happen, just a little bit of differentness. It's not something, you know, a huge event, but you just start to feel in the front of your knee just a little bit of, you know, uh-oh, something's going on there. This little starter injury or micro injury is often started by descending hills. The forces at play on your knee when you're walking downhill are considerable. To quantify it, the forces are at least three to four times higher when you're walking downhill than when you're walking on level ground. And this leads me to my very first tip. My first tip is just to simply slow down on the descents. Many hikers, even experienced hikers, like to try to make up time on the downhills. Going uphill is obviously slow, so a lot of people to make miles like to make up for that by going very fast on the downhills. But like I just described, this is exactly where soft tissue knee injuries can happen, on the downhills. So simply slow down. My next tip is to use trekking poles on the descents. Trekking poles for sure aren't for everybody, but they are undoubtedly good at offloading some of the stresses onto your knee and onto your upper extremities. One study shows that trekking poles are effective at reducing the vertical forces on your knees by 12 to 16%. Now this doesn't sound like a lot, but hiking is a repetitive activity, and even on short hikes you can transmit up to 25 tons of force onto your knees. My third tip for keeping your knee safe is use shorter strides on the descents. Without getting into the trigonometry or into the complexity, it, when you use shorter strides, the angles that your joints move at are less because you're using a shorter stride. So because those angles are less, you're transmitting less force through your joints. And it doesn't have to be dramatic. You can see here from this example that the hiker is just shortening her stride just a very little bit. My next tip is to stay over your knees while descending hills. Now this is all about just keeping your body in a, just a more forward position, and this is actually something that trekking poles help a lot with. They kind of naturally, because the poles have to be out front of you, your body kind of normally just stays more out in front. But then again, if you don't want to use trekking poles, you can just consciously decide to keep your upper body more over your knees. I actually gave this piece of advice to a PCT through hiker um, that was about 250 miles away from finishing, but was really struggling. Like his knee probably had some chondromalacia, some, you know, some sort of diagnosis. Long story short, he was definitely in trouble. I gave him this advice. I also gave him a patellar strap and this advice and that patellar strap saw him through to the end of the hike. The last tip is kind of obvious and it's up to you, your experience and your medical provider, but exercise beforehand. So much of these repetitive use injuries that occur because it's too much, too soon, after too little, are because you really haven't adapted your own body to the forces that are gonna happen. And I know for some more extended hikes, that's almost impossible. Like if you're gonna start a through hike, it's impossible to actually simulate what an actual through hiking day is going to be for you, but you can definitely work beforehand. What those exercises should be, I'm gonna leave for a future video. After I get my PT license and I practice a little bit, I'm definitely gonna start delving more into what a hiker should do beforehand to make sure they're ready for the trail. Okay, so that's it for the video. I hope you liked it. This video is actually for a portfolio project for my school, so there is some research behind it. If you wanna see the papers, I will link them below. Um, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, follow me on Instagram. If you like this video, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.